Hello everyone, my name is TNG Street Rider, and I am back with another Marvel Heroes gameplay highlight, this time featuring... I'm the Juggernaut, wimp! That's right, it's the Juggernaut people. They, the time has finally come, after some delays and much, much needed testing iterations, the Juggernaut is releasing the Marvel Heroes in a few hours from the time of this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at his trees. He has three of them, of course, like every hero. He has... In his first tree, Mystical Powerhouse, this deals mostly with his melee moves, although he does have two movement powers in them. The movement powers that stand out are Lariat and Enter the Fray. Moving over to his next tree is the Unstoppable Tree. This is mostly his movement powers. Again, he has two exceptions. He has Earthquake and Sunday Punch, which are melee skills. In addition, he has the Can't Be Stopped Passive, which is pretty much necessary for everybody. Over in the avatar of whatever that says, uh, his last tree is mostly his passive skills. He does, however, have one attack power. That attack power is the Wrath skill. Uh, if you choose to take it, you can use Wrath or Scion. You can technically use both, but they do share a cooldown. Um, I actually like Wrath, so that's what I usually go with on a build. And in here, he also has his other passive you can't miss, the Crimson Force Field. This is the power that will make him invulnerable. So, uh, I do have all of his moves to show you, but I am going to go take a quick look at what I use specifically. First up is rope -a dope and uh, it attacks very slowly at first, very, very slow. Uh, but what happens is, when you look over here, it's jumping. And that's because he uses momentum, he does not use spirit. Even though it's blue for now because of a UI bug, um, it is actually momentum and you gain momentum by moving around or using momentum gaining skills so like enter the fray will gain momentum for you or using lariat repeatedly will let you gain momentum faster he can also use his movement power called stride which i'll get to later and basically what you do is once you gain momentum oh, let me gain some more there we go you can see the attack speed changes much, much faster. And when you're hitting things, you'll actually gain some 5% uh, of your maximum momentum. So very useful to me and how I build my character. Next up, I have Round of Applause. Uh, it basically adds vulnerability to your, your enemy so you can hit harder. And if you're above a certain momentum, it will actually double the duration. I use it just to apply the vulnerability. So I usually put about one point in it, not too much. Next we have Big Headbutt, not too flashy but does a lot of damage on a 4 second cooldown and it puts him in a bleed state for 8 seconds, uh, so you can keep the bleed on permanently and it does absolutely massive damage, uh, really great skill, just nice to have in your, your rotation in my opinion. Next skill is Enter the Fray, Juggernaut jumps around and when he lands he creates that little earthquake shatter thing. Now let me show you, when he's above 30% uh, movement, he will leave a lasting tremor, which is more of a dot, and uh, the dot lasts for 8 seconds, just like headbutt, so that's how you're stacking on your damage, you're headbutting, and you're using your tremor. Next up we have Lariat, this is his basic movement ability, and uh, you know, it's just a basic charge rule, it does have the cool little effect for charging, and it will it's pretty much the primary way you'll be getting movement speed while still doing damage. So, uh, I mean, momentum, I'm sorry. That, that's that's really how you're going to want to get momentum and uh, keep it up in battle. Another skill that restores momentum is the Wrath of Kratark. I said I wasn't going to try to pronounce it, but I had to try at least once. But it's... Um, what it does is it instantly restores your spirit to full does a nice damage in a cone pretty wide area I like it it does a lot of damage and that's it's pretty much what I need uh, is a large AOE clearing ability especially for leveling up faster that's why I like it too uh, next up is Crimson Force Field this makes the Juggernaut the Juggernaut it makes him invulnerable the invulnerability only lasts for uh, a couple seconds it's uh, 3.1 seconds right now at rank 34 I believe 
rank 20 is something like uh, 3.5 seconds or uh, so it's, it's around that but uh, what we'll also do is it, once you die instead of dying you'll become invulnerable briefly so you can get out of there and not have to worry about it uh, the last skill I use on my bar is the only juggernaut skill that requires him to have a certain amount of momentum and that is Sunday Punch and Sunday Punch is basically a finisher it's a big wobbing punch it will stun people it will stun bosses as well in addition to normal mobs and uh, it will spend at least 50% of your maximum momentum uh, does extra damage and very very strong skill that's why it's the only one that has a threshold on it moving on to his other skills we do have the bottom brawling that's his second basic attack it looks pretty much the same it's also very slow but instead he gets cooldown reduction by having his offensive spells Next up is Unshoppable Charge. This is his signature move. I will be upfront with you guys. I absolutely hate this skill. It is useless to me. It is useless. It looks fantastic. It has nice AOE clearing abilities, I guess. But the fact that it's on a 40 second, 45 second cooldown, wow. Um, believe it or not, when it first came out, it was on a minute cooldown, which was ridiculous. Now it's on a 45 second cooldown and it's still useless to me because I cannot hit a single enemy with it effectively. Next up is Heavy Punch. You hold it down and you get the double hand. Uh, this is basically like a boss killing skill, but they're trying to do away with those, so instead it does extra damage when you're at full momentum. Very nice skill. Next we have Big Elbow Drop. Boom! This is one of his big AoE moves. The only problem with it, and the reason why I don't use it in my main build, is because every time you use it, you will instantly put your momentum down to zero. And that does not matter if you have full momentum or if you have half momentum or a little momentum. And I'm going to show you, you know, even when I'm at full, like I am right now, as soon as I use elbow drop, boom, empty. So that's my problem with it. Not really sustainable damage. Next up is Stride, the only infinitely channeling travel power. Uh, it does no damage on the back end. Like I said, you can use it infinitely, and it does regain momentum at an increased rate while using it. Very cool. But kind of useless since Juggernaut's already fast. Next up, we have Devastating Charge. This is a move that, just like the boss has, very useful, high damage. Um, if you like charge moves, I would definitely use it. I used it in one of my momentum uh, movement builds, I'm sorry. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to play around with. Next up, we is, this is just my passive toggle that I'll put on. Uh, both of the passive toggles look the same, so you're not really missing anything there. And last but not least is Earthquake. Earthquake you get at level 1. A lot of people will use the player mob waves. It looks fantastic. They did a great job on that animation. Uh, definitely Juggernaut-esque. And uh, you know, if you spend the 50% of your momentum, you will increase damage for this as well. So, um, that's and, and a lot of these skills are the reason why I hate that skill so much. The Unstoppable Charge is because he already has tons of AOE potential. He doesn't need any more. And uh, I'll show you why. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into battle. Juggernaut has gone through a lot of iterations on the test center. Um, we ha we actually didn't even know if he was going to launch until we, the UI bug that he was generating, uh, which turned out to be his custom spirit uh, bar. It was originally red. Uh, hopefully that art will return because it does look awesome, but it also was probably the game just crashed, so who knows. Um, as, as a character, Juggernaut is fantastic. Uh, he does a lot of damage. He can take one hell of a beating. Uh, and really, as far as gameplay mechanics go, there's really nothing wrong with him. Uh, the only problems or complaints I, I would have are largely, uh, largely personal flair type things. Like, I, I really don't like that I can't run through a mob. Like, I mean, I'm at maximum momentum. I'm supposed to be the unstoppable juggernaut, and I can't run through this guy unless I activate one of my skills. Um, 
I mean, personally, I just think it should be a passive thing, you know? Um, I asked for it on the test center forms. It was really my biggest request. Did not get implemented, which, you know, they have to pick and choose what they do and I don't blame them for not implementing, but it's, it's unfortunate. Um, another thing is, Juggernaut, even though he's the unstoppable Juggernaut, and he does have a way to decrease I mean, he has a lot of tenacity, yes, but he can be easily CC uh, by any mob in the game. Whether they're big, small, boss, not a boss, doesn't matter. Um, bosses I can see being able to CC him, but you know, even small monsters, it would have been nice if they had put some sort of, you know, either ignore collision detection or ignore CCs from non-boss mobs, something, something. Because uh, again, I, from a gameplay standpoint, Juggernaut does nothing wrong with it. I just want to reiterate that. When, if you buy Juggernaut, you are buying a fantastic, fully functional character with, with no problems whatsoever. What you are not getting is the feeling of being in a stop of Juggernaut. I mean, look at this. I gotta run around them. Because if I want to run through them, I have to use my Larry. And it, it's, it's little things that take away from the nuances from them. But, uh,. I mean, that's really a personal feeling. I can't really take points off because, you know, they didn't agree with my design decisions. I'm not a designer. I don't work for them, and I don't really have a say. I'm, I'm just a fan doing a video for them. Their souls. And, um, you know, they, they may have the right decision. Maybe my decision may, would make him completely overpowered. Uh, as he stands right now, his damage for single targets is a little low. But his damage in terms of AoE is absolutely fantastic, and he's not going to have any problems whatsoever. And I mean, you can you can see how much damage he does in AoE fashion. It's very impressive, and uh, really, it should be. I mean, he's a juggernaut. And let me go ahead. And I'm going to use his. Uh, his charge, but I want to show you why I don't like it. And, okay, this is Curse, and I repeatedly am trying to control this thing to hit him, and it just it doesn't work very effectively. It's, it's frustrating, it's aggravating, and uh, I really, really think that his signature is the worst part of Terminal. Uh, but it does not break the character in any way because you absolutely don't need it for him to be strong at all. So here we are, we're going to go ahead and put on his ultimate. His ultimate makes earthquakes around him, makes him grow in size. It deals tons and tons of damage. Uh, really, really good. Really, really good skill. And, uh, it, it makes him really, really impressive. So, I, I mean, the unstoppable juggernaut is a complete package. I mean, I mean, he really is. There are small nuances that some Juggernaut fans will not like. There are other things that Juggernaut fans will will accept because this is a video game and they don't want him to be so overpowered that he gets nerfed into the ground. Again, right now his AoE damage is fantastic. His single target damage, um, especially at the higher levels like Cosmics, are a little... Um, it's, it's a little low. Uh, it's not so low that they can't fix it, and it's not so low that it's really going to hamper you um, if you really know what you're doing, you have a good build, and you have good gear. But it is something to keep an eye out on, and it's something that may or may not be changing. Um, but they, they, they're they always going back and doing quality of life changes, and uh, they will definitely probably be fixing something about Juggernaut next week. So, um, let me go ahead and show you his other costume. This right now is his Unstoppable Juggernaut costume. This is his default costume. You can also buy Juggernaut Classic costume, which I actually really like more. Um, and to be honest, this is another person who write uh, that it, with Gazillion, but I would have done the Classic costume as the default, and then maybe his X-Men costume as an alternate costume, because to me, these two costumes are are very very similar if not identical you know that I mean 
I, I know. It's just it, it's this per small personal gripe, and I really can't hold it against Gazillion. I can't say the Juggernaut is bad because of that, because it's not. It's just it's the design decision. Um, but again, it's just being me, me being a little nitpicky. Uh, overall, though, Juggernaut, uh, for 400 Eternity Splinters, or 900 Gs, in my opinion, is a fantastic buy, and he is a great melee character in his own right, which is welcome, because we've been getting a lot of range great characters, and it's nice to have a melee hero that is going to come out and not be super squishy. So, um, that's my preview of the Juggernaut. He'll be available in a few hours from the time this video goes up. So if you're watching this video, he may already be out. Uh, again, 400 Eternity Splinters or 900 Gs. And the next hero on the roster coming out is Magneto. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for supporting the Marvel Heroes content creator community.